Well, howdy everybody. Welcome back to the shop. Apologies off the bat. I got a little bit of a cough or cold or something going on, so my voice will be more annoying than normal. Anyway, we're, we're working on the rollback truck today. L10 Cummins. It's got the same problem it's had ever since I've owned it. When it's cold, at idle, or at low load, it smokes really bad and kind of misses a little bit. As soon as you get it under load or, or above a certain RPM, it clears right up. So I think we got a problem with the STC system, the step timing control. So we're going to try to fix that. Uh, before we get to that, I've been thinking about buying a new toolbox. What's anybody know about Master Force toolboxes from Menards? Uh, so if you live outside the Midwest, you may not know. Menards is like a, it's kind of like a big box home improvement store, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot. Except in my opinion, it's a lot better. They carry a lot more American-made products, and the stuff's usually a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot better quality. Anyway, I was looking at one in, at the store the other day, that one of these 72-inch tool cabinets. It looks pretty nice. Uh, I figured out the other day, I've been running the same Mac Tools Tech 1000 toolbox for 14 years, and it was used when I got it, so it's getting pretty tired. None of the drawers will stay shut. And most of the slides are, are pretty badly worn out. It's too small. I'm looking for something better. But these Master Force toolboxes look pretty nice. 72 by 24 by, I think it's like 46 inches tall. And they're cheap. I can buy the whole thing with the top and everything for like $1,550. So I don't know. These, these Master Force toolboxes are Chinese. I mean, of course. They appear to be kind of the same as like... Montezuma and Extreme Tools and several companies seem to be selling the same one, but the the Master Force one has this lift up drawer latch. I'd really like that because that's the biggest problem I have with my Mac toolbox is I can't roll it without locking, you know, locking the key lock because the drawers roll open. So if anybody has any thoughts about these, I'd love to know. I've never uh, you know, run into someone who's used one of these one of these 72-inch ones in person. Anyway, let's talk about this STC system. So, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to see it on camera. The, the Cummins L10 uses what's called unit injectors. This is a picture right here. So there's your camshaft, there's your follower. Push rod, rocker arm, and then the rocker arm pushes on the injector. And this plunger right here has an intensifier and everything. So basically, this thing takes care of all of the functions of the injection pump and the injector and it's all built into the injector itself. So they've had unit injectors you know forever as long as diesel engines have been around. Detroit diesels used them for ages and ages. You know when you hear an old Detroit guy talk about running the rack that's what they're doing is setting the well part of what they're doing is setting the the unit fuel injector. Inside the injector there's an additional cavity. It's basically a piston and it fills up with oil so the STC system is basically a valve. It pushes oil into the injector and then when the the plunger comes down on the injector it basically causes the injector to fire sooner so it, in that way it advances the timing and when you're idling or loaded lightly you know you need to advance the timing in order to not have you know white smoke and everything like what we're having here so you'll see a lot of those old 855 Cummins they'll actually you know, just drip fuel right out of the exhaust elbows while they're idling because there's so much unburnt fuel because the, you know, the timing is all set for, for maximum power, not for idling. And so if the truck had an injection pump, it wouldn't have this issue because the, there's flyweights in the injection pump that, that sort of advance the timing automatically. But since we have unit fuel injectors, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So when they went to the select system, which is basically a computer, the computer controls the timing of the injector, so you don't have to worry about all this crap. So they only made the STC for a short time. I don't know, from uh, sometime in the mid-80s to when they phased out the mechanical engines in the early 90s. And when it works, it works fine, but when it doesn't work, you get what I have, I think. So here's the STC valve here, a kind of a cutaway of it. It's just a piston, and fuel pressure pushes on one side, Oil pressure comes in and goes out. You know, it's basically just a valve. So it senses the fuel pressure and controls whether or not it's sending out oil. 
Anywho, there's not much to it. I went ahead and bought this uh, this repair kit for the STC valve, and uh, there ain't much to it. A couple washers, couple O-rings, couple springs. Now, how much do you think that should cost? If you said a hundred dollars, you must work for Cummins. All right, tomorrow is today. It started raining yesterday, so I'm working outside, and it's it's cold. But that's okay. We'll get on with it. So here's the the oil pressure inlet for the STC system. That's the line that goes to the oil pressure manifold inside the rocker cover. That cap right there is over the fuel line. That's for your fuel sense for the STC valve. So I've got a line, this red line tapped into that fuel line, and the black line tapped into the oil line. And we come out here, the black line is our oil pressure gauge. We should see 15 psi on this gauge. And then we'll crank up the air pressure on the red line, which would simulate our fuel sense. And then our oil pressure should drop down to zero. So we'll start it up and see what happens. I've done a bunch of testing on this this STC system and I can't make heads or tails of what's going on. So you see the truck's off, it's been off for like two minutes and I've still got, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds of pressure in the STC manifold, which I think it should hold some pressure because I've got 100 pounds of air against the fuel sense port so that should close the STC valve. Well, let, let's see what happens when I let the air off. So now I let the air pressure down to zero, and the oil pressure should go to zero because it's opening the valve, right? But it stays right where it is. Anyway, I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. I think that the, the STC valve is just a little sluggish or stuck, so I think where we're headed is we're taking that STC valve off and having a look inside, even though the book says not to, because I can't make sense of anything else that's going on other than that STC valve's got to be having some kind of issue. So all we can really tell from the the fancy pants test rig that we built is that the STC system doesn't seem to work which we kinda knew before we did any testing right so I don't know that might have been a giant waste of time anyway I went ahead and pulled the STC valve out sorry I didn't show that but I don't believe they allow that much swearing on YouTube maybe I'll show you putting it back on it's a pain it's all the way at the back underneath the down by the starter it's it's not much fun. I took all the hoses with it too because I want to test these hoses and make sure that there's not some kind of big blockage because something doesn't add up here. Well as some of you may have figured out there's not a whole lot going on inside this valve so this is kind of the business element of it right here. It's just a spool valve and a cartridge and this is really the only thing that I found that was I guess wrong or suspicious is that this spool was pretty stiff. So I think there was some, I don't know, some varnish or something on the inside of that bore. And I cleaned that up and it's a million times better now. I don't know if that's enough to affect the operation or not. But anyway, I've got some new O-rings and springs and stuff and we'll put her back together. But I don't, I don't see a smoking gun here. There is a check valve here in this one fitting. I'm not sure it was working quite right. There was some junk in there. But that shouldn't really affect it except at the very first startup. So I'm still scratching my head here. Oh, it's the third day of me fighting with this Cummins. And I finally just gave up yesterday. I wasn't, I wasn't getting anywhere. Things weren't making sense. Uh, so I just went home, relaxed for a little while. And uh, things are making a lot more sense now this morning. So I'm going gonna, gonna to go through a few tests here on the bench, show you guys what's going on, and explain why... All the tests we did in the previous part of this video don't really mean anything. Sometimes that's kind of how it goes. Alright, this is really hard to film. You're looking inside of the inlet port on this STC valve. I'm going to apply air pressure to the fuel sense port 
and we're gonna see you should see that piston move see it there it goes there it goes and that's it and that is exactly 23 psi so now I'll back it off and you see it retracts and there it is and that is yeah pretty good on the lower shift point too what that means is that the STC valve is working correctly now it's already been rebuilt I put the rebuild kit in and I did not bench test it before I installed the rebuild kit which I can't stop kicking myself for that because I don't know for sure if it was working correctly out on the truck I think it was the problem with the testing is that I didn't know that it had this check valve. I thought the check valve was further further down the line in the system. So all the test results that we got are kind of erroneous because this check valve was maintaining the pressure all the time, which was throwing me off. Now the Cummins literature that's provided in the manual for this STC system, it's not too bad, but it's kind of oversimplified. And for me, it's a lot easier to understand how a hydraulic system which that's what this is works by looking at a schematic which the Cummins manual does not have a schematic that describes how this thing actually works so the way it works this is your engine oil pump so that creates whatever amount of pressure in the case of this truck at idle it makes about 30 psi and then there's a valve block that's the STC valve right here so normally at idle with low fuel pressure the oil just passes right through that valve then it goes through a check valve that's the check valve in that elbow that I didn't know about comes up and goes through an elbow into the head then it passes through a manifold and then this is the injector so inside of the actual unit injector this is what's going on there's a check valve that allows oil to, to flow in to a piston then the camshaft pushes the piston down you know as it actuates the injector and then the oil bleeds off through a relief valve at the bottom of the injector and the way it's supposed to work is every time there's over 10 psi of oil pressure up here it pushes open the check valve and fills that piston and then the piston basically pushes until it reaches 70 psi and then it starts to bleed off the oil now I didn't show but there's you know there's five more injectors just like this and they're all hooked up in parallel now the, where we were testing it yesterday was right here at this elbow and I was getting some weird results because I would get oil pressure here and then you know you turn the engine off and it would maintain oil pressure didn't make sense to me but now I get it the the check valves maintaining that oil pressure so that's okay what is confusing to me from my testing is that it, the regardless of what I do with the fuel sense port shifted not shifted on the valve doesn't seem to matter I always seem to have the same pressure here at my test point and theoretically if the if the injectors are working correctly the piston should push out all the oil and if there's no more oil coming to replace it then the pressure here should drop down to zero but it wasn't doing that and furthermore to confuse things even more I had oil pressure here but the engine still runs like crap when there's pressure here it's supposed to advance the timing and that should make it run better at low power or at idle it should also clear up my white smoke but it's not doing that anyway it was very difficult for me to test all this stuff on the truck because I didn't know if any of it was working now that we've removed the STC valve and tested it on the bench, we know this part of it, the system right here, is working fine. I tested all the lines that come in and out of it. There's no blockage. The valve shifts at the correct points, so it's calibrated correctly. This check valve works, so the problem has to be here somewhere. It has to be. Well, I did find something else. This is the main oil line that runs from the STC valve up to the cylinder head. And that's no good. It's leaking too. I tested it with some air pressure. So I don't know if I did that while I was taking it apart or if it's been like that for a while. I don't remember a big oil leak over there. But anyway, I'll have to get another one made up. So I've got 30 pounds of air pressure plumbed up 
to the STC manifold. Oh, you see it going in there. And there's a valve in the system that's shut off. So the STC valve now is eliminated from the system. And we've got air going to the STC manifold. And we should see it bubbling up out of each injector. So there's one. See that one. And number one is good. Yeah, three is good. Four is good. But I can't get anything out of five and six. Nothing on five. Nothing on six. So what does that mean? Blockage in this manifold? Kind of seems that way. You can't get that out of there without taking the injectors out. Oh boy. I think we're headed for new injectors anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and take this injector out real quick. There's no other way to check the STC manifold. We've got to take the injector out. over I guess oh doo doo well of course nothing's ever easy the injector hold down bolt is underneath of this rocker arm I suppose you're supposed to put the injectors in before you put the entire rocker assembly back on oh well where's the fun in all that there we go Well, we got push rods falling all over the place here. Alright, I suppose you can't see that. Don't feel bad because neither can I. But I know it's there. Right there. It takes a 12 millimeter 12 point socket. Would you believe with all the fancy tools I have, I didn't have one? In my regular toolbox, I had to break into the uh, the flying tools, find the old Pittsburgh, see if she'll get the job done. Got every other freaking size. I probably got a half inch drive one. I didn't think about that. In fact, I'm sure I do. Oh well, Pittsburgh's getting the job done here. Alright, get that out of there gingerly without dropping it into the engine. Should be a big, like a big fork shaped thing that fits around the injector. Yeah, I guess it doesn't come out until the injector comes out. We can do. Alright, what is there to grab onto with this guy? Whatever that was, it worked. There it is. Out. Okay, here we go. Is everybody watching? Here comes the air pressure. Boom. There's no blockage there. Yeah. So, what did we learn? The problem is not the manifold. It is the injectors. I think this 
injector is blocked internally. The oil, STC oil, comes in this port right here, and it goes, there's supposed to be like a manifold, and it should be common with that little hole right there. That hole is, I guess, to provide lubricating oil to this link right here. This is kind of like a flexible link that goes up to your rocker arm. And if I put air here, I should get air there. And I do not. Let's see if I can cobble something together here to show you. Yeah, wish I had the right thing. Yeah, for sure there's nothing coming out of that little port. And I grabbed a piece of... I grabbed a, a 40 thousandths thread wire and tried to stick it down in here and there's something blocking it it's blocked up solid so I don't know I don't really want to take this apart because I don't want it to affect my core you know my core value if I get a reman injector yeah I don't know so anyway so you see that the nozzles are a little bit carboned up but they're really not too bad these injectors don't really look terrible you know, of course, we can't see what's on the inside. So, in no way am I tooled up to repair unit injectors. I'm going to get some, some numbers off of them and, and try to find the remands or possibly get these rebuilt. I called around town here to the... There, we have a pump shop here in town that's part of the CAT dealership. They cannot rebuild them. The only thing they can do is, like, pencil injectors and, you know, mechanical injection pumps. They can't do these unit injectors. I called another place. Uh, down in southern Illinois, there's a, a place called Area Diesel. She didn't know if they could do it. They were supposed to call me back. Never heard anything from them. So, I'll get some numbers off of this. I didn't have the numbers. You, you can't really read this stuff without taking the injector out because the hold down covers the injector model number. And there it is in case you're curious. Anyway, I think that's, that's where we're going to leave this video. Uh, we'll call it the end of part one because I'm going to have to get some some parts to fix this thing. So all we really learned is that uh, I think our STC system was working correctly all along. We took it apart, put some O-rings in it, and tested it on the bench. And we know it's working correctly on the bench, so there's no reason that it shouldn't work correctly on the engine. We did find a bad hose. I replaced that. It's not exactly what the OEM spec hose but it'll work just fine and yeah we learned that there's possibly a blockage in these injectors or, or something going on the other thing that's really weird I don't know if I have footage of it in the testing or not but what happens is when you when you open the STC valve and allow oil up into this manifold to the injectors and then you close the valve the oil pressure stays, it never dissipates. And from my understanding of how these injectors work, it should pump all that oil out. At least should go down below 10 PSI, which is the opening pressure for that internal check valve. And if that's not happening, then something else is going on. What I suspect might be happening, if you see my schematic view here, is that this check valve might be holding open and this piston portion inside of the injector might be acting like a pump basically creating its own pressure and the reason I suspect that is that every time I crack open that STC manifold line I get a big bunch of air and there shouldn't be any air in there it should all be oil that's the purpose of those check valves is to keep the air out of the system you know as long as you have oil there all the time then there's nowhere for air to come in so yeah I don't know unfortunately I'm not going to take this injector apart I know I'll tool up to fix about anything, but I have my limits. So anyway, stay tuned for a follow-up. Probably what I'm going to do, I've got a whole top-end gasket set. We're just going to tear that whole uh, rocker cover off. It needs to be resealed anyway. It leaks oil like crazy, and it needs a manifold gasket, exhaust manifold gasket. So we'll fix that, and I'll get some footage on doing that. We'll probably break some studs and have all kinds of fun getting that turbo off. So... Stay tuned for part two, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it off here.